Birmingham. Thank you very much, Acting Speaker. Acting Speaker, uh, as the day draws to an end, it's obvious to many of us that uh, we'll be heading off to an election and unlikely to meet here in jovial good company on Monday, as the uh, manager of government business in intimated at the end of question time. So it might be worth taking the opportunity in this MPI to have a little think about what's happened in our journey over those three years, because we've had three budgets in those three years. And they do indeed, as the member for Newcastle says, tell a story. Um, and it, I think they, the government encapsulated it themselves in continuity with change, yep. <laughs> because each of those budgets have been exposed consistently and, I have to say, with increasing speed, to be fundamentally unfair at the heart of what they represent. We had the infamous 2014 budget, the first budget of the Abbott government. It put in place such reprehensible changes that they had to be backpedalled by the government or hidden away or put on freeze because they were so objectionable in yep. the community that they could simply not get them through this place. In that budget, we saw broken promise after broken promise. It went to the heart of the trust that people had in the government that they had elected. Broken promises on school funding, broken promises on health funding, broken promises on pensions, yeah. broken promises on cuts to the ABC and the SBS. In fact, if, they, if yeah. there was consistency in that budget, the consistency was if they'd made a promise, they went out of their way to break it in that yeah. budget. And it was an absolutely, say. absolutely discredited budget. So one would think having been exposed relatively quickly for how bad and unfair it was, that it might have disappeared off the landscape. Yeah, you'd think so. There's more to that story. That it's, it's not going to give any great uh, comfort, I would argue, to the Australian public. So we then had another budget, 2015. This was a budget that said, like, let's just stay under the radar a bit. It didn't go too well last time. Let's just try and stay under the radar a bit. Maybe try and get everyone to focus on our commitments around childcare. Yeah, As my colleague, the member for Adelaide, very clearly outlined for the House, that didn't go too well either. No. Not too well either. So, having travelled through two budgets and not quite two years of government, the message actually got through, obviously, to quite a few on the other side. And they thought, we need a solution to this. We don't have an economic narrative. The Australian public are not coming on this journey with us. We're being exposed for breaking election promises. We're unable to articulate a case for the future. Now, what could be the solution to that? Now, we would have suggested, you know, drop your unfairness. You know, that might have been a start. Get in contact with where average people are actually at in their lives. Seek to put in place a plan for jobs, investing in the things that contribute to people being able to get jobs or create their own businesses, things like education. We could have given a couple of options like that, but no, no. What did those opposite decide to do? Swap their leader. Swap their leader because the current Prime Minister stood in the courtyard not far from this place and said, it is time to end this farce. I'm going to challenge because I'm going to give economic direction to this country. I'm going to bring uh, the reforms that are needed to set us up for the future. And what hope there, were, there was as a result of that, particularly in the back bench, I have to say. People, used to be on People the were hoping special. that this would be the circuit breaker that got them where they needed to be. Well, what a disastrous experiment oh, that has liar. been. We now have this Prime Minister, this new Prime Minister's budget, naked and ashamed in front of us within less than two days of having been brought down. It shouldn't surprise you, because fundamentally we have a Prime Minister who's the Emperor with no clothes, I would argue. People are now in the street pointing out that he's a great disappointment. This budget prioritises millionaires and it prioritises big business over the average ordinary 
people that it's supposed to deliver for. It is exposed, it's an embarrassment, and it's no wonder the backbench is so deathly silent in quick.